Today on Interurban Era, in this true one day build, I'll teach you how to build solid resin auto kits. We'll be building a truly uncommon American classic, the 1950 Kaiser Virginian. Just after World War II had ended, Henry J. Kaiser, a shipbuilding and industrial magnate, set out to build his own line of automobiles. Partnering with Fraser Nash, they retooled the former Ford Willow Run assembly plant, which had built B-24s under what was then the largest building under a single roof in the world. They set up production and produced Kaiser automobiles from June 1946 until July 1953. Kaiser offered a surprisingly wide array of vehicles across most price points and body styles, from Jeeps to the luxurious Kaiser Manhattan. One of the rarest body styles was the Kaiser Virginian. With a meager 1,200 produced in over three years, it failed to capture potential buyers despite some interesting design features. The first and most notable is that it's neither a hardtop nor a convertible, but a convertible body with a solid metal top attached to it. At a glance, it's not unlike the vinyl Landau top finishes offered by other manufacturers. Another neat feature was a curtain of glass from the A to the C pillar with a bizarrely small window where the B pillar usually is. It was said to give the driver more visibility and to enhance the convertible look and feel. The marketing was also rather strange. Directed mainly at Americans in the Deep South, the Virginians sought to evoke some form of luxury with literally hundreds of two-tone paint and upholstery options. They tried to market in the same strata as the Cadillacs and Packards at the time, but failed to compete mainly thanks to its underpowered Continental 6 inline engine trying to haul a car with a curb weight of over 3,500 pounds. On my layout, it's 1967, so the little Kaiser would be about 17 years old. It'll look good for its age, but the clear coat is dulled over the years of sitting out in the sun. We begin by giving the model a bath in warm soapy water. In this case, I'm using a very era-appropriate dish soap to scrub off the resin mold release chemicals and prep it for painting. Swirl it around in the measuring cup until it no longer feels slimy, then let it dry. Before we can paint it, we must mask the windows off. Rather than using tape, I prefer to use Miskit, a liquid mask used in watercolor painting and illustration. I apply it to the model with those fuzzy yellow micro brushes, making sure to completely mask off any windows and also mindfully mask off the headlights as well. Since this is a clear casting, the end result will look great without having to fake a painted window reflection. Now you can learn from my mistake. I thought the model would be fine to paint after a thorough scrub, and I was wrong. Luckily, some quick thinking netted an even better result. I sprayed the model with clear flat finish, tester's dull coat, before applying paint again. It seemed to seal the model permanently. I also decided, rather than use an inaccurate green spray paint for the body color, I'd mix my own, using some Vallejo Reflective Green and some white paint. It turned out to be a perfect match. Then I used some dark blue paint and the same reflective green and created a darker roof tone and applied it to the model. Next was the chrome. If you really want to knock it out of the park, you can use bare metal foil or a really top shelf chrome paint applied with a micro brush. Since my car is 17 years old and dirty, I opted for a nice silver to capture the look of dusty and faded chrome. Between each application of paint, I sprayed the model liberally with dull coat. It improved the finish throughout and smoothed out any imperfections. I applied the chrome paint very lightly with the tip of a micro brush on the raised detail. Don't hesitate to wipe it clean if you mess up and try again. You can also hide small brush mistakes with pits of rust or other forms of weathering to turn any mistake into a happy accident. Do make the extra effort and consult photos of real vehicles that you plan to model from resale sites like Hemmings or Bring a Trailer. They're usually excellent resources for helping you capture all the correct details on your model. The last bit was painting the white wall tires, hubcaps, and then attaching them with super glue to the resin body. Now it's time to hit the road. In this case, my little Kaiser is stopping for some gas in Sonora, Mexico on the Pan American Highway on a warm November day in 1967. I hope to inspire you to try out some resin car kits in the future. Having some truly unique vehicles on your layout is always an eye-catching treat. <laughs>